Hello my fellow traders, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am the Chartist and we had a pretty green day. Pretty green day on the SPY. We had some selling pressure towards the end of the day. It's okay, here's why it's okay. Look where it closed guys. Look at where this candle closed. It closed above our five day moving average. Okay, like I say to you guys, we always in a strong bear market, we get rejections. A lot of rejections from the five-day moving average so with this close above the five-day moving average that's that is showing us some sign right now showing us some sign that spy could be heading up higher okay we have a few signs okay besides that as well okay so one first sign is closing above the five-day moving average okay we need to watch if that'll hold okay the five-day moving average is currently at 431.93 you could say 432 because they change day by day depending on the current price of the spy right so right now we have this sign right here close above the five-day moving average we have this descending triangle right here descending triangle guys and it stayed above the descending triangle right came down close to the support level and stayed above okay still within the descending triangle and it looks like it wants to go test up here around 445 range that is a critical resistant level if we break that resistant level i'm confident i am confident that spy will head up to 460 but we are still technically in a bearish market i don't want to say a full-blown bear market because we're still trading above the 200 day moving average but it's a bearish market okay so this up here looks like a great selling opportunity okay but keep in mind a lot of people is going to be thinking that so where would our area liquidity be of course right there we have a lot of retail traders like you and me looking at the same chart thinking huh this 445 level is looking like a good place to short i mean if you're going to short you're going to short at resistance but what if a lot of people are thinking that same thing right what if so we always want to keep that in mind. So of course the blue zone is our area liquidity where I recommend to enter a short. Okay? Well, I recommend, but that's up to you if you do it or not. All right? Another thing you can do if it breaks out from this level, wait for the retracement. That's much safer as well. Wait for the retracement. If they take out the area liquidity, see if it holds above 445 if it holds above 445 it's a good time to enter it confirms a breakout and go up higher pretty simple right simple idea effective idea but not easy to execute because we human beings are well we're emotional beings right okay but if it breaks this level and then it comes back down that's a good sign that we're going to head back down to this level to the 428 level okay so, of course, our support here also had an area of liquidity. Let's check it out. All right. Boom. So, we had this double bottom pattern that I spoke about not too long ago, sometime last week. As you can see here, it took out the area of liquidity. And they pushed it up, closed above the five-day moving average. All right. So, we are seeing some signs that SPY has some more upside. Okay. Not to mention this RSI. I don't put too much weight in uh, divergences, but this is technically a, a looking like a bullish divergence. Right here, it's heading up, and then over here is sloping down. Okay, so we have a few reasons why we should be bullish on spy right now. Okay, this could be the beginning of a new trend forming because that was one crazy drop, right, from 455 all the way down to 426. Okay, so descending triangle still hold. I think we could get more upside as long as it stays above the five day moving average. As long as we stay above 432, 433, we can get up to this level right here. Okay, don't miss that move. But if this level breaks down, I doubt we're gonna head back up again. All right, because look at one and two, two times we broke down that level and we got back up. I feel if SPY breaks that level again, I don't think we're going to go back up until we hit some critical support level, 425 or maybe 413, okay? Because remember, this could be basing for another move to the downside because it's on, a, it's on a downtrend right now. It could be basing or it could be a bear flag, 
okay we can look at a smaller time frame and possibly see you can see some type of bear flag is flagging a bit so just be cautious of that all right just something i wanted to point out okay so the price action is showing some bullish momentum let's see how what's a vic what the vic is up to see the vix it dropped below the five day and the 13 day moving average but look at that strong bounce off the 20 day moving average that is a bullish bounce okay and for the past week the vix has been trading within a range okay up here at 2480 and all the way down here at 20.50 i want to see this 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 range get broken okay it'll give us a clearer idea of where the spy wants to go the spy want to go up more or down more okay so vix below 20.50 bullish for spy vix above 24.80 bears for spy okay they inverse each other so vix go up spy will go down vix go down spy will go up okay Let's keep on watching the price and let the price action guide us, all right? So right now, it looks like some bearish, uh, bullish momentum is building for the SPY and bearish momentum is building for VIX, all right? We have this bearish engulfing candle here, okay? We had this bearish engulfing candle here and it was huge, but had a choppy day the next day and here's another bearish engulfing candle. So we saw two bearish engulfing candle on VIX so far. Let's see. Will this range finally get broken? All right. So keep it. Remember, 24.8 to 20.5 is the range of the VIX. Watch that range and watch it get broken. Then we have a clearer idea where the SPY wants to go. Okay. Because right now it's looking like it wants to head up higher to back to 445. All right. Now moving on to triple Q. This is looking pretty good. Okay. Now I, I did mention Wickoff's distribution, but what we. But like what happened with Tesla, with all distribution, it doesn't have to happen. It doesn't. It also doesn't have to be perfect with the schematic. Okay, price action is number one. All right. So what we have here since uh, October of 2020, we had the strong support level, and we had the fourth bounce yesterday. That's a beautiful, a beautiful bounce. And then the following day, which was today. Had a big green candle and look where we closed. We closed just below the five day moving average. Okay, 10 cents below the five day moving average. That is so close. Okay, if it would have closed just a little bit higher, it would have been that um, above the five day moving average. But it's okay, it's not much of a difference. So, what I want to watch for if Triple Q gets back and closes above the five day moving average. Use the one hour chart to help you out. Identify where the five days at 357.48. If you see some closes above that level on the one hour chart, there's a good sign the triple Q will head up to the 13 day moving average at 364. So let the price action guide you. Let the scenarios play out first, especially the scenarios I'm trying to identify for you guys. Watch it happen like a hunter, you know, we're being patient and we wait for our time to strike. Okay? So if I see Triple Q closing above 357.48 on the one hour chart tomorrow or intraday, I'm going to be looking to buy calls and write it up. And my, my stop loss will be under 357, okay? Maybe in the 356.5 range. That will be where my stop loss is, okay? If, if Triple Q gaps up, then the five day moving average will now be support level, okay? 357.48 will be the support level. And we will be looking to bet to the upside, okay? Because right now I'm seeing buying pressure building, all right? And of course, it doesn't matter. None of it will matter unless you manage your risk, okay? Don't be scared to cut your loss, all right? Cutting your loss is a win. Keeping your losses small is a win as well, all right? Mindset's important. But here's Tesla. Tesla, another red day. However, still closing above the five-day moving average. That five-day moving average has been acting like strong support these last couple of days. But we will see if it will continue to hold, okay? Because it looks like at these levels, it's like it, barely, it wants to go up to 800, but then it just sells off during the, like, as soon as it gets to that level. That's a very critical resistant level right there around the 
800 level. 798 to the 800 level, okay? So it looks like it's starting to trade within a range. So be careful. 766 to the 800 level is the range. Watch for that breakout, breakout of the channel, okay? But still, remember we broke out of this bull flag. I still want to see that retest. Still haven't gotten the retest, okay? The retest is now at 754, All right? So you see it dropping. Don't panic. This is still a bullish market. Tesla's trading above all moving average. I would look for buying opportunities, okay? And if it breaks below the bull flag, then that's a false breakout. And I would look for selling opportunities all the way down to the next support level at 728 and 718. All the way down here at 782, 702. All the way down to 700 would be my AOL around there, okay? All right, so that's what I got for Tesla. Moving on to, I wanted to talk about Doge real quick. Dogecoin. So I got Dogecoin following the Wickoff's accumulation. Yes, I use Wickoff for Doge as well. As you can see, compare it. We're in phase C. Here is phase C. Well, I want, it's not that one. It's more like this one. Nope, not that one. This one, here we go. Okay, as you can see, compare it to Dogecoin. I think Dogecoin is around this level. We're getting really close to breaking out from the phase C rate, uh, phase. Okay, we're heading to the phase D, where it's gonna get really, really bullish. So while most people are bearish or do not even care about Doge, that's the best time for you to look to enter, okay? Before the smart money starts pumping it and then you catch in form, okay, just saying. Now let's take a look at Bitcoin. Oh, wonderful. So remember I said to you guys yesterday. Let's see if we get that test of the resistance level at 50k. We got that. Now we're starting to break. Okay, so my next price target is at 53k. Test this high. If we could break that high and avoid the double top. We can get to 59k. And then the next price target up here at 71k, guys, is looking really good. But remember, we got to make sure this breakout level holds, okay? The breakout level right now is at 50.9k or 50.8k. Below 50.8k, that's a false breakdown, guys. We're talking about a lot of breakouts and breakdowns today. All right, so watch out for that false breakdown. Below 50.8k, that's a false breakdown if it starts coming back down, okay? I don't think so because as you can see, it looks like we are starting to head into phase E. Oh, yes. All right, guys. So I hope y'all made money. I hope I know I'm looking at my watch time on YouTube. Most people do not watch past five to six minutes. And I usually leave my Bitcoin analysis towards the end. But if you're one of the few people who watch, first of all, thank you so much. And I hope you made a lot of money on these crypto investments. All right. And that's all I got for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you all soon.